Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. An Indiana man named Dave Christensen was exploring the Grand Canyon last month in the winter illegally. He and a friend took a snowmobile to Lookout Point where Dave Christensen planned to rappel down the steep edge of the canyon to a river that flows 850, uh, 850 feet below that rim. Great planning. He had a 360-foot rope. Right away, you can tell that we're probably not dealing with the brightest bulb in the package. Uh, now, even though his rope was too short, he wriggled off the rope onto a very steep decline so that he could get down to the river bottom. Though he had climbing equipment with him, including an ice pick, he was not able to get back to his rope. It took his rescuers four 600-foot ropes and an expert climber lowered down to him to be able to lift him back up out of the canyon. Facing charges for his illegal entry into the Grand Canyon, Christensen says that he's not a quack. He was actually there to help rescue people. Yeah, all those other people he saw hanging off ropes over the rim of the Grand Canyon, <laughs> I guess. What was he really doing there? He was searching for hidden treasure. Maybe you have heard about this treasure from a few years ago. A Santa Fe art dealer who claims that he gathered together his life's belongings and has buried it in two large boxes in a secret place. He says that it's not in a dangerous place, and yet four people have died looking for this treasure. 250,000 people have gone on a website claiming that they have been part of a search party of some sort. Now, Dave Christensen is fortunate that he was not the fifth fatality looking for this treasure, searching the Grand Canyon in the middle of the winter through five-foot snowdrifts and ill-equipped, all for some hidden treasure. Well, I've got news for Dave Christensen, for a quarter million people and maybe more. If this treasure even exists, and there are many who believe that this Santa Fe art dealer made up the whole story just for the buzz, if this treasure exists, even if it is found, it is relatively worthless. Think about it for a minute. This art dealer amassed this fortune over an entire lifetime. And what was it worth to him? Did he start a business that would gainfully employ lots of people? Did he give some of his fortune away to people who might benefit and get a hand up in times that they really need it? No, he, he just, just threw it into a hole in the ground. Worthless. Now say that treasure is found by someone someday. Are they going to just dig another hole in the ground to keep it safe? In which case it will again be just worthless. I'm sure you've heard of Aesop, of Aesop's fables. He tells this story. A miser buried his gold in a secret place in his garden. Every day he went out to the garden, dug it up, and counted each piece to ensure that it was all still there. A thief who had been observing the miser day by day surmised what was going on and one night stole into the garden, dug up the treasure, and made off with it. The next day, when the miser found that his gold was gone, he cried, he wailed uncontrollably, he tore his hair. A passerby rushed over and said, what is wrong? My gold, oh my gold, he cried wildly. I have been robbed. The passerby said, did you keep your gold in that hole in the garden? 
why didn't you keep it in your home where it would be safer and where you, where you would have access to it when you wanted to buy something? Buy something, said the miser. I couldn't stand to part with any piece of gold. I would never spend it on anything. Then the passerby threw a large rock into the hole and said, if that's the case, just throw dirt on that rock. It's worth just as much as the treasure you lost. Today I point you to treasure that is far more valuable than anything that you can bury in the ground. Far more valuable than any credit card in your purse or your wallet. We have this day read in the Gospel of Matthew a whole treasure of Jesus' teachings that have been handed down over thousands of years. We have learned from Jesus' teachings. People even quote Jesus' teachings without knowing that they have come from the Bible. Any one of these teachings could be a sermon all unto itself. For instance, who in our day hasn't heard someone say, don't judge me, your day is coming. Sound an awful lot like Jesus saying, do not judge so that you will not be judged. What about Jesus' words about the narrow path to life? We could even say the narrow path to victory. Surely in this election season, we are going to hear some political commentators say that the narrow path to victory is going to go through a specific state whereby we will gain enough delegates for a nomination or enough electoral votes for an election. Jesus spoke about building on rock, not on sand. Now, that's, that's not very novel. We have known this for the ages. It's not like we've only gotten smart in the last 100 or 200 years and thought, you know, if we're going to build a building, we should probably put it on something solid. No, we have known that forever. The difference is this. Jesus says that building on a solid foundation is like hearing my words and then acting on them. That is the true treasure. And within these words that you helped read today from Matthew, we have the golden rule. How many people have quoted that golden rule? But do they know that it was Jesus who said, do unto others as you would have others do to you? It was only... Last week that we considered the previous chapter in Matthew, Matthew 6, Pastor Jason was preaching on prayer and the treasure that is ours in heaven. One of the verses from those verses last week is this one, for where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. As I was listening to Pastor Jason preach, I was thinking, what, what a treasure that we have in the church. It is ours in Christ. I come from a family that highly values education. Lots of advanced degrees, lots of professions. Most of those professions are in the service industry, healthcare, education, the church. Now, this is not a family immune to the treasures of this world. It's hard to resist the new car smell or to kind of want that latest and best sneaker or shoe. But perhaps what, what uh, identifies this family most is a simple, unvarnished faith. Nothing complicated at all. No 12-step program to becoming a better Christian. Just believing something so simple as Jesus loves me. This I know. The treasure is apparent to us. We don't have to rappel down a Grand Canyon wall or go searching in the Rocky Mountains for a hidden treasure. We don't have to write a thousand-page systematic theology to tell people what it is that we believe. We simply receive Jesus' teachings. Teachings like ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened. 
teachings like do unto others as you would have others do to you, like do not judge lest you be judged, or perhaps build on the solid foundation that is Christ. When people heard Jesus saying these things, they were astonished. May we likewise be astonished with the great treasure that is ours in Christ and in his words. Amen. Please rise and